Hi, you know, welcome back once again. And uh, this is a continuation of a previous lesson on the um, continuity and uniform continuity of functions. And um, you recall that we talked about phase tense and uh, we made a point that if we are to prove that a function is uniformly continuous, then we can start by saying that um, it is continuous at a point. And if within the proof we are unable to select delta such that it is independent of uh, x naught, then we we'll conclude that okay, um, the function is not uniformly continuous. Right. In our previous uh, video, we took an example which led us to concluding that that particular function uh, was uh, uniformly continuous. Now let's see what happens here. So while we look at another example, so example two. So here we are showing that, so show that uh, this particular function f of x equals x naught. Uh, so it's going to be show whether so that it is open. So show whether f of s equals x naught. Uh, okay, f of s equals x squared. Um, is um, continuous or uniformly continuous on R, a set of real numbers. So that's what we're trying to do. Show whether this is continuous or uh, uniformly continuous on uh, a set of what real numbers are. Right. So we start, start by so the proof and we start by first looking at showing that this one can be continuous at a point. Right. So at that point we say that this we should let x naught be a member of a set of real numbers. If f not, uh, s naught is a member of a set of real numbers, then uh, for this particular thing to be, this function to be continuous at s naught, for instance, then we should be able to make this uh, statement that the limit of so the function x squared as s gets closer to x naught should be equal to the function by which is given as x naught squared. And so, having written this, this equivalent statement is that so if we are given a term positive, then there exists delta, which is a function of epsilon, and is greater than zero, such that um, when we say x minus x minus, that the average of that is less than delta. Then the implication is that we need to have the absolute of the function here, x squared minus x naught squared, as uh, to be less than uh, x. So we have something like this that we want to show. So our interest here is to show that whatever we have here is actually going to be less than x. Uh, basing our argument on the fact that x minus x naught is going to be less than uh, delta. So let's see how that plays out. Um, average of x squared minus x naught squared should be equal to now you recognize a uh, difference of two squares here. So we can simplify this one as the absolute of x uh, minus x naught. Uh, then multiplying x plus x naught. So we have something like that. Now, you see, whenever we're doing this particular proof, uh, as far as introductory analysis is concerned, then our uh, initial statements here are always taken into consideration. Where we are looking at achieving something like uh, absolute of x minus x minus, so that we can introduce delta, and from there we will we'll see how we bring uh, x. Uh, already we have x minus x minus here, so we are comfortable. So the only problem we seem to have is that we have x plus x naught, which uh, is not quite 
to the same as what we have now. So let's see how we do a little bit of create and destroy. So we have here this and uh, we'll, we'll pretend and write here x minus x minus. Then we will be, we'll be waiting to see whether we'll be accused of engaging in mathematical crime. Okay. Then after realizing that okay, here is x minus plus first, then here is minus. So to cater for that, we will bring 2x minus so that whoever says this is just simply simplify this one. We are here. We've not done anything, anything great. So, so we have uh, this one here, x minus x naught. And um, now we realize that at this point we can do a little bit of uh, application of random law of uh, uh, inequality or the yeah, so we want to have a triangle like this. And uh, this side is y, this is this side is of um, x. And this is z, and uh, let's say z is equal to x plus y. Then the triangle inequality is saying that when we find the average of z, okay, it is always going to be uh, less than or equal to the absolute of uh, y. And plus the uh, absolute of um, x. Oh, so we're trying to apply that one here for, for, for this place. That's what we're trying to do. Just the uh, quick reminder of the, the triangle uh, uh, inequality, or the law of triangle inequality. So when we come here, we say that the absolute of x minus x naught. Then multiply by the absolute of x minus x naught. Okay. Then plus 2. Now this becomes x naught. So, so the triangle of inequality is here. Then we have this. Alright. So having done that, you realize that this place is this, this is the same as this. And it is the same as what we have here. And if this is less than um, delta, then it's appropriate that you introduce a delta. So this place becomes less than or equal. So while introducing delta, we will put this place in your delta, then this is delta, then plus 2 x naught. So that comes out. Now we will have delta. Uh, we have delta here and delta here. so we need to label the delta 1 and what delta 2. So let's call this one delta 1 and this one delta 2. So we have that here. And because we are introducing delta, and delta here have been set to be greater than this, then this sign here wouldn't be an inequality sign. Comes uh, less than so. At this point, we, we are almost there. I said that we have to select a uh, delta. So we have two delta here. So we select uh, and choose the value for it. So let's see what we do. See, on the face of it, we will not be able to see what values we choose so that at the end, we need to, that will lead us to um, epsilon. Right. So we go somewhere and say, okay, let's keep this place to be one for instance. So if this place is one, then we have one plus to absolute of this. Then that will be multiplied by delta 2. And because at the end we need to introduce epsilon, we quietly equate this one to epsilon and make delta 2 the subject. So delta 2 now gives us epsilon over 1 plus 2 absolute of this. Okay. Essentially, this is not part of the, the procedure. Is there something we're doing? to make sure that we actually select appropriate or you choose uh, appropriate values for delta 1 and delta 2. So we say that choose delta 1 um, so we are choosing delta to be equal to the maximum of delta 1 and delta 2. So what is delta 1 and delta 2? We have it here. So we get from this one. Say that this is equal to, so we are looking at the maximum of delta 1, we said should be 1. 
then delta two becomes epsilon over one plus two absolute of this. So we can now substitute that here. So what we have here, we have in this to be less than so our epsilon two, uh, delta two is epsilon over one plus two absolute of this. Then multiplied by uh, here to give us 1 plus 2 as a result of x naught. So this cancels that and the resultant lesson is a also. So we have been able to reach it. Yes. On reaching here, what happened on the way? We realized that while we were selecting delta, one of the deltas will have to depend on x naught. One of the deltas that we selected depended on what x naught. So the, the, the actual concept is that any time we are proving that the function is uniformly continuous, then it should be possible that when selecting delta, delta shouldn't depend on uh, x naught. But at this point, we realize that our selection of delta depends heavily on x naught. So we will conclude that because this one, Selection of delta depends on what um, x naught. We say that the function is continuous, but not uniformly continuous. So since so delta depends on x naught, so it implies that f of x, uh, which is this function, is Continues, so it is that uh, continues on R, but not uniformly continuous, so, but not uniformly continuous on R. So, good. Today is how we, we conclude um, as far as this function is concerned. There is an alternative way of showing this where well, we convert everything into sequence and uh, I see whether we uh, can also reach the same conclusion. But you will have to catch me in the next video it's, it's in order to look at that uh, alternative method of solving this. But until then keep calculating uh, a lot of progress as far as the course introductory analysis is concerned. Thank you. Bye.